<laughs> what came first, the chicken or the egg? It's a trick question because you can't have one without the other. In fishing, there's an interesting parallel between game fish and the forage fish they feed on. Do big fish move to classic structures, points, humps, weeds, or rocks without regard to food? Or do they follow their food as it moves seasonally to the best available habitat in the lake? In most cases, the answer is clear. When you ask what came first, the forage or the fish, chances are that the food arrived first and the predators followed. Today, on the edge, oh. we go after big largemouth bass that follow the bluegills they feed upon into deep transition areas between rocks and weeds. Then we go after fall walleyes on a weed bite, or more correctly, on a perch bite in areas where yellow perch forage has moved into deep weeds. It's all about factoring in the food when it comes to finding fish. And now that we've solved that one, why do you suppose that chicken crossed the road? Chances are she was hungry. Food dominates everything. Everything is about where's the right food for me. And big bass, this time of the year, a lot of these natural lakes like this, they like bluegills. Pure and simple. Know where the gills are? You got the bass. It's like, I hate to say the word, but it's really a no brainer. Closed captioning provided by Fraybill FXE Stormsuit. Oh man, first, ca first cast, man, first cast in there. Oh. Look at that, she's got a bunch of good stuff all over her. Not a giant, but not a, oh, oh come here, but not definitely not a bad one by anybody's description. I took her home and all. And my first cast of the day, now that's gonna be very, very good, or, <laughs> or very, very bad. We'll know in another hour and a half, won't we? <laughs> You know, in a lot of these natural lakes, uh, uh, mid-sized to small natural lakes that we fish all over the Midwest, you know, the main forage base for bass like that is bluegills and uh, a crawfish, both. And you know where the bluegills are or the craws, you know, you're gonna catch a lot of fish. In these lakes, a lot of these lakes are very fertile, like the one I'm on now that we like to refer to them as eutrophic. They carry a lot of pounds of fish per acre. And a lot of them are expressed in small, stunted bluegills like this. And the bass really, really like these bluegills. And uh, in the summertime, water's pushing 80 to 83 degrees. These bluegills, you know, well, they're doing a lot of different things. But there's certain areas that the bluegills are in that the big bass are in. 
And I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. And I fish a lot, a lot of lakes like this. You figure out that bass bite based on where the bluegills are. Bluegills are prime forage for bass, and bass follow their seasonal movements throughout the lake. In the spring, bluegills spawn in the shallows as water temperatures rise from the mid-60s into the low 70s. As post-spawn bluegills desert their shallow nesting sites, they commonly disperse across adjacent weed flats, relating to the best available developing weed cover. Bass follow, shifting locations as weeds thicken and bloom. As summer arrives, deep weed edges become focal points of bluegills and bass activity, but there's often more to fish location than meets the naked eye. Fertile natural lakes like the one we're fishing today often have sparse, clumpy weed lines. Bass and bluegills often move in and out of the weeds, making at least occasional use of adjacent rocks leading to deeper water outside the weeds. Rock humps and points extending outside these weeds become untapped fishing bonanzas for both big bluegills and big bass. Find the rocks and you find the fish. I'm running over a saddle here. Look at this, look at this habitat in here. This is phenomenal. A lot of this, see the stuff that you're seeing here is wood. There's deep wood spread across the bottom of this thing. And I'm gonna come, there's a saddle area you can actually see the shade, shaded stuff behind here on this side. There's a high spot to my left. There's a saddle that comes across to this bulrush point here. Some of it there, there's the rocks. This is what I'm looking for. Now I'm starting to see the rocks there. See the rock pile here? Look at this. This is the stuff you're looking for off of the weeds. Look at this. It's, this is perfect. Scattered rocks, they're big rocks. That was single, but there's more rocks off to my left here that leads high up into the weeds. These are the rocks along the weed line, scattered rocks along the weed. Daddy, band there. Now look, I'm coming out of it here. But I do not know this lake really well, but we will by the, by the end of today, we'll have a pretty good feel of it. Yeah, you know that fantastic, ooh, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't, not think about the the bluegill rock combination, but it is deadly. It is absolutely, absolutely deadly. Absolutely. All things about fishing, let's face some facts. After the spawn, where does a bass like this go and spend all its time and why is it there real simple all they care about now is food and cover food dominates everything everything is about where's the right food for me and big bass this time of the year in a lot of these natural lakes like this they like bluegills pure and simple know where the gills are you got the bass it's like I hate to say the word, but it's really a no-brainer. With water temperatures nearing summer highs, bass metabolism shifts into high gear and bass go into full feeding mode. Depending on where they're positioned, high near the surface, down near the bottom, in or out of the weeds, a variety of baits excel for catching them. That's where that fish was at. You can see this, this stuff here is that where that fish came out of. Oh, 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 man. This is so much fun. You know, the baits that we're fishing, these are the big bass down baits. These are the baits that you throw when these fish are down on the bottom and those gills are tight to the bottom, the edges of the grass and out on those rocks. Yeah, you know, when these gills get high in the water column and these bass will follow them right up, that's when you see them flushing across the surface doing their deal. When that happens, you know, swim jigs, shallow running crankbaits, lipless crankbaits over the top, it can be a phenomenal topwater bite. And I'll tell you, very few guys up north throw topwater on these deep weed edges like this. Very few. The indication is watch for those hot muggy days, not front days when those gills are flushing and that top water bite can be absolute dynamite. 
I love when you come to do a television show like this. You pull up on the first spot and you're done with the entire show in one hour and you catch 15 or 20 bass back to back to back to back to back. It's my idea of making good television shows. It doesn't happen this way all the time. But when it does, it's really sweet. You can have a, a lights out day or a lights out week. Yeah, you know, where you can come back in like this and just go bam, bam, bam. That one feels like a mogad idea. Oh, yeah, look at that baby. Woo! Uh. Look at that. That's a big gal. Woo! <laughs> fun, 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 fun. Come here, mama. This one is a big mama. Ooh. Ooh, no. I'm going to have a real sore thumb by the end of the day. I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that. Look at the size of that bass. Whew. <laughs> that is a giant. A real, real giant. You know, understanding that predator prey. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you know, in this case, we're talking about bluegills. When they're in certain kind of cover and understanding how these big bass follow them in these kind of lakes is key to putting a lot of fish in the boat. Going to extremes triggers big bass during tough bites, and extreme bass tactics explains how to fish bigger, smaller, deeper or shallower, faster or slower to get radical results. It's part of our Angling Edge instructional DVD collection, available at anglingedge.com. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. bait down there. Yeah, a lot of... Oh, Mike. Got him. Good one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big fish. Whoa. Here. Come here, baby. Let's see what we got going here. So I can tell on that head shake that she's the right one. Oh, she's a mule. She's a mule, baby. Staying down good. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, boy. That is a beauty. Oh, yeah. yeah girl. Get that one in there. You got it? There we go. Oh, my God. oh, oh nice. Yes, yes, yes. Whoa, well, I don't want to lose you, no, Chief. No, no, no. I don't want to lose you. Where's your bait? My bait? Let me see here. <laughs> Sit down for a second. Get him. Look at that. Would you say she ate it? Huh? <laughs> I would say she did. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second, Mr. Wall. I'll have you out of here in a minute. <laughs> There. Wow. Wow. Without a doubt, Mike and I are fishing my favorite time of the year to catch walleyes like this. Big fish and lots and lots of them. You're a walleye fisherman. I bet I got a little bit of your attention. Water temperature is uh, about 57 degrees. It's early fall. The Trees are turning, water temperatures dropping like a rock, and the big fish are biting like crazy. They're doing a lot of different things. You can catch them a variety of different ways. And uh, we're gonna talk about one of our favorite locations that's often overlooked, and two presentations in that location that'll put fish in a boat for you. Seasonal fish movements are often predictable. For example, in spring, most freshwater fish spawn in the shallows. After spawning, each species disperses to their best available summer habitat according to their individual needs. Yellow perch might first move to deep weed beds, then to drop-offs bordering deep water, with some perch proceeding offshore to deep structures in the main lake basin. Shiners display diverse behavior, with some groups continuing to roam shallow shoreline points and flats while other schools move out to deep structure or perhaps even suspend. In essence, forage species are often available in a variety of depths and areas, leading to a diverse array of walleye fishing patterns throughout the summer months. In fall, however, cooling water temperatures send a seasonal alert to bait fish and walleyes alike. 
signaling scattered groups to begin gathering into large schools. Fish of all species begin drawing closer to structures, becoming more bottom-oriented in their movements. As shallow weeds begin dying, falling prey to cooler temperatures, fish desert them, moving to adjacent, deeper, healthier weeds bordering the drop-off areas. Simultaneously, walleyes and baitfish, moving inshore from deeper summer areas, join their shallow brethren to form large seasonal aggregations along deep weed lanes. The seasonal movement creates a perfect storm of feeding opportunities for walleyes. Baitfish are at their peak size for the year. Predators are bulking up and schools of walleyes are able to hunt efficiently for baitfish congregated amidst the decaying weed beds. There. Oh, another fish. That could be. There we go. I'll get the net for you. Good one, Mike, again. Right. Yeah, nice eyeball. Nice. Oh, man. Oh, there she is. There she be. Oh, man. You got him up quick. There. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she came go. up quick. Just swing her to me. Nice. Just swing her here. And hang on, hang on, Mr. Wally. Hang on. You know what Mike and I are doing is a. Actually, hang on a second. I, I gotta get that. The hook came through his mouth. Look at this. And went into into the net. What we're doing is a two two pronged. Actually, a two pronged approach. I'm jigging in front with Trigger X on a Moon Eye jig. We actually got two rods rigged. And uh, our other rod, let me show you this. This There's is what one. Mike Good is picking up behind us with. Really is the clack and wrap. Ooh, I could see him beating up on you. Yeah. That's beating up on you really good. Yep. Beating up on you really good, Michael. That's okay, I'll take the beating. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. A nice fish, huh? Yeah, yeah, this is a beauty. I love doing this, I really do. Ooh, Ooh that's a good one. Well, he he nice really one. cracked her good. I got him by one hook, I can see. It's just barely hanging on there. So yeah, you, are you going to get her? Well, I hope so. <laughs> here, I'll back up and yeah. let you get right You're in gonna there. you going to let me get in here? There we go. Oh, there you we go, that, huh? That's a bit of a beast. Yeah. That's a bit of a beast, my friend. There look at that. The whole right just, on look at that. Perfect. Look at that. See, that's one thing about that bait, boy. I mean, it's amazing, the size of the fish. I was just thinking about, you were talking the other day, you were catching all those fish with those guys just reeling straight in, you know, and it was uh, different weather conditions, and now we got a real calm conditions, and uh, you were catching a few on the jigs, and I thought, well, I'll just try jigging this bait a little bit, and that'll be darn well and behold, it worked, so. Another nice fish, huh? You know, the other day I was doing a radio show, and this guy asked me the question, what's the most impressive thing you've seen uh, uh, in fishing? in a long time, and that was really simple. It's some of the technological breakthroughs. An example today, 360 imaging, which takes side imaging and runs it in a wide circle around you. Great for deep water fishing to see where you're going, what's happening, run through pods of bait, bait for trolling big open expanses of water. It's really, really slick. And the new uh, 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 iPilot link, and the things you can do with the iPilot link what it simply does is tie your Minn Kota trolling motor, my Tarova, together with my Hummingbird depth finder and a Lake Master chip. And one of the features that we really use quite a bit, particularly in walleye fishing like this, is I could set it at a particular depth with a push of a few buttons. Set the speed on my Minn Kota, lock it in the direction I want to go, and it'll stay at that depth in that direction, at that speed, how slick is that, huh? Just incredible, incredible. There's another one right there. Oh, oh that's right. a beauty, that is a beauty. Right that's a beauty. Oh, oh, oh. That is a donkey, Mike. That's, that's that what I've been waiting for. That is a donkey, for. man. Woo. Yep. Okay. He's going underneath. Okay, man. Whoa. Going, wow. On. Yeah, this is a little bit more substantial walleye, Al. Yeah. All right, I got him out of the motor, Al. I'm going to come okay. around this side. Oh, boy, that's a big gal. Yeah. Holy smokes. There you nice. go. Nice. All right. 
Boy, that thing just ate that bait, too. Look at that. Watch your fingers, man. Yeah, those hooks are sharp right now. I'm going to get this out of here. That's, That's a big like fish, it, man. Wow. Well, I know one thing. If you're a walleye fisherman and you like catching big walleyes, you need to put these techniques on your fall fishing list. There she goes. Nice. Hey, for more detailed information or to purchase any products you've seen on this show, go to lindermedia.com. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Hey, in my local newspaper, there's a section call, uh, called Local and State. It just gives you an update of what's happening in the area. I want to read you a section in here that caught my attention. It's titled Non-Religious Community Meeting. A lunch meetup for the local non-religious community will take place at 11 a.m. April 29th at the Sunshine Kitchen and Moonshine Lounge in Brainerd. All atheists, agnostics, and free thinkers in the area are welcome to join us for casual conversation and good food. Now, an atheist is somebody that doesn't believe in God. An agnostic is somebody that says, yeah, there might be a God, there might not be a God, case sera, sera, it's no big deal to me, life just goes on, da, da, da. But when we got to the words free thinker, that really got to me because I consider myself a free thinker. I believe one of the gifts from God for all of us is we have the ability to exercise our free will. You could believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God, or you can say, I don't believe anything in it. It's a bunch of baloney. You have a free will choice to make. I exercised my free will. I took time, I looked at the world around me, did a lot of looking into God's word, experienced what I believe is, is truth and power of God's word in my own life. I exercise my free will. I consider myself a free thinker. That is a decision I made. We have free will choices. Like I said, I believe that's a gift from God. I do consider myself a free thinker. Do you consider yourself a free thinker? I just thought those words were really strange in conjunction with atheist and agnostic. Had to share it with you. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.